Where'd you gotta go? Uh, another one is somewhere here, two in Liverpool. And then I stay overnight and then I go into mold and wherever. Oh, Literally, it's been five minutes burnt in here. It smells lovely as well. Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Manshed. Now that's the way I usually start off these reviews, just straight into Welcome to Tom's Manshed. But as you just thought, I just thought I'd put that on a little bit of an intro of the arrival of what today's review is about, which is the chair I am sat on, a Herman Miller Aeron. Now this is one of the biggest financial decisions I've made for a long, long time. It was a heck of a lot of money. If you've done any, you'll know how much um, Herman Miller chairs are. I got this in the sale and it was 900 quid. Here it is um, in the sale. So I'm recording this uh, screen capture on uh, fr uh, Thursday the 13th of May 2021 and I believe this is the last day of the Herman Miller spring sale I rang them up earlier in the week and they told me today was the last day I tried to get some extra discount out of them they, they weren't having it but 15% off is um, very worthwhile and I've checked and these offers don't come up that often it's the same price they do I was on Black Friday, which is a long wait till November, so hence me, uh, me family deciding to get one yesterday. But this is the um, site. Now, this is the colour, this one here, this, um, I forget what they call that colour, whatever it is. Mineral, mineral, that's what they call it. That's a colour I really like, but that's a lot more money. So if we just click through here, shop the sale. So we've got this Aeron office chair here, and it's 865, but that is the one with the not fully adjustable arms. It's only got height adjustable arms. The Aeron one with the um, polished bottom is 1038, and so on and so on. You can look at some of these prices, but here is the one I went for under gaming shop air on is this one and as you can see it's down from a thousand and fifty nine to nine hundred pounds and fifteen p and it's all in black they do various colors a graphite and a carbon um, which are like two different shades of gray and then the mineral which is a really very pale gray or white and this the new uh, gaming edition which is exactly the same as all the others it's fully loaded that but it's in this black color and i quite like that it's uh, it's like pitch black and i think that looks really good everybody's different some would prefer the gray ones but it's the same price the carbon and the graphite ones are the same price 900 and uh, 15 so yeah you're saving uh, about 150 well 159 quid in this sale so uh, it's well worth getting but like you can see it um, it's got the posture fit SL it's got the uh, forward tilt seat angle and it's got a fully uh, fully adjustable arms so yeah so that's the one I got but um, yeah, loads and loads of very, very desirable chairs on there. So it said about 10 days delivery, but um, as you'll see on, on the website, 
as today they are experiencing delays due to demand so it, it took 12 days to come but they kept me informed all, all through it when it would be so, so that was great it was, it was good customer service now the reason i went for it is i'd had i still have a vertigear gaming chair now i bought that about i think i'm guessing about four years ago and like a lot of people i fell for the looks and the gaming chair business i was just using a normal sort of like cheaper office chair and i thought oh gaming chair it's 300 quid it's got to be better it was getting some good reviews and that um, so i went for it and when it came yeah it looks great they do look very nice red and black the red and black one i chose you so you'll be seeing it all soon and uh, I, I never felt really really comfortable in it you never get got in it and think oh it's great like i am at the moment in this didn't expect it to be armchair comfy but uh, I, I just put up with it i thought well that, that's that's the way they are but over the years i just became less and less liking it and the bracket underneath started cracking some hairline cracks and i could feel it sort of wobbling around so i started welding it and i did this weldering pair in fact i'll show you that that now so this was the original um base of the vertigear chair now it started cracking here a long time ago, two years ago maybe, two or three years ago. And I welded it here. As you can see, I am not the world's best welder. <laughs> but it did its job, it held it together because it was all fracturing around here. And it was wobbling like mad when I sat on it. And then, just about six seven months ago eight months ago something like that started going here as well look at that just a, a really rubbish metal basically and i'm not heavy i'm only at the moment i'm i think i'm sort of 14 and a half stone something like that 13 and a half 14 the heaviest i've ever been is like 15 and a half so i'm not a massively heavy bloke and you can see how it's cracking around here but that was the original one and the ram went as well the ram had gone long before that the hydraulic lift i just left it at its lowest position but uh, i couldn't fully get that apart so that was the original one of them and and just as a, a part of it totally irrelevant to the vertigear or the herman miller chair but just to show, I have tried other chairs. This was one, me, one of my wife's one. This was from uh, uh, Staples, I think. And look how this has gone. It just totally sprayed large. Well. It's a bit heavier than me and my wife, but not that heavy. And that went, and that was the, uh, that was the chair. Again, absolute garbage. So. Uh, it just shows I've had enough of cheap, rubbishy chairs, and uh, yeah, a lot of money for the Herman Miller, but um, that 12 year warranty. The more I think about it, the more I'm uh, coming round to the idea and uh, thinking it's one of my better decisions. So, as you saw there, a lot of uh, cracks developed. My welding worked great. Did, did okay to begin with and then recently it started cracking again and it was moving all over the place so i had to get a new base piece and the hydraulic ram had gone a long time before that it collapsed down to minimum size which didn't bother me too much because i have the chair quite low so being stuck on its low size didn't bother me i, did, I didn't need it any higher so i lived with the the broken hydraulic ram for for a while but the cracking of that bottom bit was was the last straw so i had to get a new bottom piece and i got a hydraulic uh, lift at the same time so i'll show you these the two that i got off um amazon so this was the lift i got the hydraulic lift as you can see i purchased it on the 3rd of march this year just a couple of months ago 
and yeah it works fine it's still on the chair now I don't know how long it'll last but this was the bit I had to purchase this was to replace that cracked one I've just shown you that, that came that, uh, the original one and it's basically just just the same as the original so I'm dare say in another three or four years time this will this will start cracking as well or it maybe even less I think it was less than that that it started its cracks so that was um 9.99 the round was 12 so it cost me like 23 quid to, to do it up to get it back to original spec and at the time i thought oh well i might as well if i'm trying to make this chair better i might as well buy another cushion for it or something so i bought this it's like memory foam and gel and it is very very comfy it did increase the comfort a lot and i also tried this one i think this was about uh, 20 oh this was yeah it's 20 quid for this so you know i spent a bit on cushions as well out the two i prefer this one i didn't really like this gel one you can still feel the the honeycomb sections through the the cover that it's in that's like a zip up cover that you put it in it fit the chair really well it was just like perfect size but increased the comfort a bit but it, it wasn't that good if you're going to get one if you're thinking i would recommend that one so i decided to do up basically the gaming chair get it back to almost as good as new and uh, and i did it the the bracket worked fine the, the hydraulic lift worked fine but then i got to thinking oh, do i really want this chair and and I'd, I'd, I'd already sort of started craving for something really really good like a herman miller so i plumped for it and yeah i went for it 900 quid to me is a heck of a lot of money and when i tell all my mates i've just spent 900 quid on an office chair they all think i'm mad and i did to begin with as well but i've been sat in it now for a week and it's the best decision i've ever made because I, I saved myself all that money um i'll just show you now this is the uh, the price of them now so here's herman miller's site today as i'm recording this the first of june and you can see it's 1059 pounds that's the full normal price now this is the one i got the air on and it's foot fu the fully loaded version it's the gaming edition now all the gaming edition means in this case is that it's black the whole chair is like pitch black you're not paying any extra for the gaming name it's the same price and it's fully loaded it's got the forward tilt on it the three position armrests and everything and that's the normal price of it 1059 including VAT and delivery from Herman Miller I've looked around for private stores and that they don't seem to me any real difference in price than getting it from herman miller themselves so as you saw there uh, i did save myself a big chunk of money by not hanging on and hanging on and hanging on but going for it in the sale so i saved myself 150 quid or so so yeah so this is the review the review on the two of them oh hang on i haven't shown you the uh, the vertigear one that i've got this is it it's the uh sl 4000 because it's got the fully adjustable up down left right in and out arms that i'll be showing you and that is currently 339 euros which works out at 293 pounds so call it around about 300 quid if i was to buy a new vertigear gaming chair today or 900 quid for this um so yeah it's three times the price is it worth it yes it's worth more than that to me because i don't think the, the vertical is worth 300 pounds now i'm not calling all gaming chairs i can't do because i've not tested all gaming chairs that's the only proper gaming chair i've had um i'm trying to think about all the chairs i've had swivelly tight office chairs and uh, i think i had one that was like gaming colors but it was never classed as a real gaming chair i think they're all from staples or local stores or whatever and uh that's what made the decision to get that years ago it's a proper gaming chair but it didn't seem any real different in quality than any of the others 
Now, there are gaming chairs from that secret lab and Noble and that, which cost a lot more, and I dare say they are a lot better. So I'm not calling all gaming chairs, but I'm just comparing this Aeron with that Vertigear. So I'll go through now and in detail show you the differences between the two chairs and uh, let you make your mind up by the end of the video um, if it's worth spending this amount of money on this sort of chair. Okay, so here I am sat in the Aeron. Now, I'll show you all the movements and there'll be close-ups on screen of it as well. So, on the hydraulic lift, it goes down. That's the lowest it'll go. I've not measured it. You could find out all the specs online, but my knee is like level with the top of that at the moment. And obviously these arms will fit easily under my desk and at its full height it is pretty damned high if I hold my knees level up to sort of this height and there's um, it struggled to clear the bits under my desk here so if I get it down to about there that's my sort of normal height so this these knobs here on the left hand side this flat bit here is the tilt forward of the seat. You can have this slight forward tilt so that if you're sort of leaning forward like this at your keyboard, it gives a bit of forward tilt to the seat. It's only a few degrees, you may not be able to see it so easily on screen, so I'll try. So to engage that, you just take the weight off the seat, just lean back a bit, Click that forward, it's only two positions, click it forward and if you watch now, you can, I can definitely physically feel it's gone further forward. Maybe if I'll try and keep my foot flat on the floor and if you look at the height of this knee might give you a thing. And as you can see we're fully tilted forward now but my back is still against the back of the chair. If I pull it back to its normal position put my feet on the ground now and there that's as far forward as it goes again I'll just put it on I'll show you from that uh, position so that's as far forward as it's going at the moment if I turn that switch on I've got that extra amount which is quite handy when you're leaning forward now that's that switch there just two position that's your forward tilt switch this round one here has three positions so you've got fully back one two three so on that one there fully forward i can't tilt back at all well just a few inches but it stops there and it's just a three position tilt back click it one back and i can go back a bit further before it stops and click it back fully and I can lean right back. That's the one I quite like. So there your left hand controls. The only other control on the left hand side of course is your um, height of your arm and you can reach that. You can reach all the controls from sitting down. So that's that. Now the other side We have got this lever here. As you pull it out, if you sat on it, you will move down. And then to bring the chair back up, like any hydraulic lift on any office chair, you've got to take the weight off it, pull it, and it springs right back up. So you sit on the chair and then you just keep nudging it till you're at the right height. And the other control here on the right hand side is the tension of the, the spring, the tilt back spring. I believe they altered this knob. The old one you had to turn a heck of a lot of times from sort of easy, easy spring to stiff spring. Now I've counted on this, you can still move it 12 full turns from the furthest position forward that it'll go before it locks to the furthest position back. So that's still quite a lot, 12 turns, but I've found that you don't need them full 12 turns. For me, it goes from, I'll just show you, fully forward. So it's hard to show you 
from here how many turns I'm turning it because each sort of movement of my hand is probably about half a turn. But if I go fully forward on there, that's locked now. Okay, now, so I've now turned this knob back to its full backward position. So anti-clockwise, viewing from where you're viewing now, anti-clockwise is back until I can't turn it anymore against its stop. That is like the weakest spring position. And if you look, it's really it's too easy to fall back in your chair. So if you were extremely light, maybe, I don't know, but it, it just goes back for me far too easy. But you don't have to go right the way forward to the full 12 turns because then it's locked solid almost. I find just sort of like hot one, two, three, four, say five turns. And that is a nice, that's about right. I'm going back at the right speed. I can sort of like hover there and there and just hold it with my weight. And that is a nice sort of tension. Maybe just a tiny bit further forward. A bit tighter. But any further forward than that, and I'd have to press back really hard. But obviously if you were heavier weight, more, you'd probably want it a bit further forward. But, so you don't have to move it the full 12 turns. Maybe sort of like six, I find, from fully back to uh, the position I like, fully forward. Anything further than this, it gets really, really stiff. And of course, once you've set that, you're not likely to want to change your mind. But the, 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 the actual movement, it's hard to explain compared to the gaming chair, but it's much more sophisticated, this, this box of tricks under here that contains the spring. It's, I've had a look at uh, online YouTube videos of it stripped down and there's all sorts of gizmos in here, cogs and wheels and cables and uh, the spring is like a, it, seems, it appears to be like a, a wound sort of wide coil spring and it's much, much smoother. Except so without experiencing it, you, you can't tell over a video, but it's a lot smoother and more accurate. I can sort of hold it a lot better than I can on the gaming chair, which is just like one big coil spring underneath with a, a course adjustment. And, and it just doesn't feel, you know, in the same league mechanically. This is so, so much smoother. So that's your two controls on this side. Your hydraulic up and down and the tension of your tilt backwards and forwards and of course you've got your other arm height control over there so that's the um, tilt and leaning back like this it is just absolutely gorgeous to sit in compared to the gaming chair you know the, the, the support under my legs it's uh, great. I've read some people have complained that it's it can be sort of hard at the front here, and yeah, there isn't any padding, and it's not like sitting on a a comfy, a big um, armchair like that with tons of padding. But I don't find it uncomfortable at all. I, I, there's nothing digging in. The seat curves down. It's supported by the mesh, and as I'm sat at my computer, I'm usually sort of like this watching YouTube. Uh, if I did want to uh, tilt it forward, because I can just do that. And I'm right forward now. I've still got my back against the back, but I'm much further forward. Tell you the truth, I don't tend to use that very often, but it is a feature that's, uh, that's handy because it is there. And uh, like I say, it's just the feeling I'm getting now is just totally different in comfort compared to the gaming chair. There's no headrest, uh, as you notice. You can buy an additional headrest, and um, one that is approved by Herman Miller. It's a lot of money, 100 and something quid. I may add that at a later date. I don't know. I don't tend to sort of like recline right back in the uh, the chair and use the headrest but uh, yeah it would I suppose be okay if I could put it up there to support my head there but 
It just feels fine as it is. And I don't spend hours like this. If I want to lie down and watch TV, I'm on the uh, my reclining armchair there. But while I'm, it's transformed the comfort while I'm, uh, I'm at my PC. This it's, it's really, really nice. The arms, you see it come up and down and in and out. Much, much smoother than the gaming chair and they tilt in and out again a further travel than the gaming chair and the padding is much much better they are far comfier than the gaming chair was so good to have them obviously it's depending on the height whether it'll fit under your table but that's that's a bit too high for me I find them at uh, maybe just a slight I found them that maybe just a midges up from the bottom is about right for me and it still fits under the table and so I can just hover it in any position I like okay right could almost go to sleep here now but uh, let's do the rest of the video so that's with the switch fully back you can see how far it's tilting forward here if you look at that gap that's with it back and if I tip it forward now you can see you've got that extra forward tilt and like I said that's the knob for the backward tilt so that's it it's full allowance as I twist that forward one click that's the middle twist it forward again another click and that's the chair fully forward so they're your only two controls, this side adjustment here, your arm adjustment here. So once again, this seat tilt forward, that's there, and the forward position lets it go to there. So hopefully you can see here how squidgy the arm is. It's really, really comfy. It goes in a lot better. And the adjustment is here. And this is the trigger. Pull that up and that's your full extent of movement there and just lock it in whatever position you like. As you see it pulls out it goes right from the back and it's you can feel sort of like a ratchet. There's quite a lot of uh, adjustment. That's fully back. fully forward and the tilt in because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven or eight clicks from fully out to fully in. Now the lumbar support is this you turn as you turn this knob here you will notice if you look up here this distance here you'll see this entire sort of back goes further towards the back of the seat and that's it fully tight now and the tension now between the seat and these bits here is pretty tight with that the other way as you see this now 
it's moving this assembly out away from that lumbar support or with it fully out with it fully out now this tension is much slacker I can easily get my finger in there and if you look at these pads they move sort of up and down and they will go left and right as well and this back of them is similar to the armrests it's a bit hard to show you on camera here but I don't know whether you can see it's like a spongy foam and the bottom one and and the bottom one and the top one here are both made of that same squidgy foam so you've got a good sort of half inch or so of that and they're fully articulated about when I first got it I thought well that's gonna be you know be right on your spine because the old air on the lumbar support was a thing that went this way to sort of like teen with the curve of your back like that and I thought well how can this be but obviously that their experts have improved it and this does you know articulate always and it is extremely comfortable I tend to have that about halfway the tension about halfway but obviously it's a, a personal thing and uh, it doesn't feel like it's sticking in your back at all and yes the bit here this box this box of tricks is what houses all the uh, the cables the cogs and the spring and you can see it's hinged here from the middle so when it tilts back it's from about the middle of the chair which is different to what the gaming chair is So these are the casters and they, uh, they appear to have a, a rubbery sort of feel, six centimetres in diameter, same as the gaming chair. And uh, they seem to have a rubbery texture on them. Uh, that's why the dust has been attracted and stuck to them. So they tend to grip the floor a bit better than the hard, shiny plastic ones on, on the gaming chair. You can see it there, it's a bit hard to see, but there's not much clearance between the bottom of that hydraulic lift and the floor so you're much better on some sort of hard floor than a carpeted floor. So that was the new Aeron chair. Let's have a look now at the Vertigear chair that uh, it's replacing. Um, I've got it mounted, I've got it stored now in the cinema room. My grandson is going to have this, I'm going to give it to him. He wants a gaming chair, he's only 11, so it'll be okay for him. Um, but at the moment, like I said, I've got it stored temporarily in my cinema room. So while I'm in there doing it, I hope you don't mind, I'll give you a little tiny few seconds tour of the cinema room, just for anybody who's interested. If you're not, skip on straight to the review. So uh, let's get into that now. So this is a rare... Uh trip out of my shed. This is where I've got the gaming chair stored at the moment. This is my cinema room. Got a poster of Hellboy there. That was bought to us by some friends. We got the uh, Dark Knight there. Superman, that's all the, the video stat. That's a 4K projector and along this wall it's all Marvel themed. So moving over to these are the speakers, the more don't short speakers. All stuff in there. And that's the the screen. Hundred inch screen. But anyway, back to the chair review. And like I say, I've just got it stored in here at the moment, the gaming chair. So I'm going to set my tripod up and then I'll, I'll go through the same 
things with that. That's a cushion I tried to improve the comfort of it with. Okay, so here we have the Vertigear gaming chair, which I'm now getting rid of. Had this for about four years, four, maybe five, I don't know, four years or something like that. It's held up reasonably well. There's no splits or anything in the seat. There is here in the headrest, you can see there's tears developing here in the headrest and just down here as well. But the lumbar support on this is just a slide up cushion. And these elastic straps, you can see it at the back, have come, have just all gone totally. So all the elasticity has gone out of them. So I did have them sort of like tied round. You've got to sort of tie them round in a bunch there to put tension on the lumbar support. And it's the same here. I've had to tie a knot in that because all the elasticity went out to hold the headrest. Now, this, see, I'll show you the um, the tip back in a minute when I'm, when I'm sat on it. The arms on this are nothing like as comfy as the Herman Miller. There's a bit of padding, but I'm pressing hard down now with my finger and it's not hard plastic see it's it is soft sort of like foam but it just doesn't you know you've only got a, a couple of millimeters of of press there if you can see that and the up down movement is this tab here you pull it and it moves up and down so we've got the full articulation the in and out is very slack it's just I think originally you had to push this tab in here to move it back but as you can see it's I think that's totally lost its thing so they just move on their own anyway these and uh, again you can see there's not much cushed in at all and this tab at the front is to slide the arm back and forward. So you've got backward and forward, in and out, but like I said, that, that wobbles now because this tab doesn't seem to do anything. And you've got your up and your down. Uh, and your hydraulic left the same when you sat on it up and down. I've had to renew the hydraulic, I'll show you that and the total base of the chair but yeah there's no tears appeared or anything so I'm now sat back in the gaming chair after a while out of it and oh it feels feels horrible compared to the uh, Herman Miller but, and as a pull so this is just your standard um, lever that does the hydraulics so it's at its lowest now and if I click that, that's at its highest. So it'll be about the same, the same height adjustment as the uh, the air on. I think that's pretty standard. So I'll go down there. Here's your uh, your height adjustment of your arms. And on this, of course, you have got a headrest on this, which you haven't on the Herman Miller. So you can buy one, they're expensive, as everything is that for them. They're not made by Herman Miller, but they are approved by them. I forget the make. I'll put it on, on the screen, I think. I'm probably going to have to save up for one of them. They're 100 and something quid, but that's that's for a, a future date. And uh, but this one, being a gaming chair, of course, has got the headrest. And it is reasonably comfortable. It's, if you put it in the nape of your neck there, it is quite comfy. And your tilt on this is just your normal, you know, you pull it back, lean back, and then when you pull the lever back up again, it flies up the pack and hits you in the back. So yeah, you got your back, the angle of the, the back and the recline on this, and this does recline fully back like that. So you could, sit on this or lie down on it I, you never would because it's extremely uncomfortable lying down like this how anybody could ever want to do that I don't know as you 
pull up so you get it to your normal angle that you like and your, your tilt back of it is a lever under here it's just again the usual it's like a metal rod you pull it out to let it tilt back and you put it in to lock it in position and the spring tension is a big i'll show you that shot a big sort of knob under here with a coil spring on it there's no way you can reach it while you sat down as with any any chair like this you can't get at that but you've got to get off the chair to adjust it so yeah if i pull that out i can tilt back there. if i push it in it'll it stops it tilting back it's like a a crude mechanical lock that stops it tilting back and if i want to adjust the tension i've got to get under here because it's right in the middle of the seat here and put some tension on there and now sorry that's made it stiffer I've only not used it for a week and I've forgotten but so you've got to get off to do it but having said that it is something you probably only set once but with this knob fully out like I said I've had to renew this mechanism with that fully out it's it tilts that but it, it's it's just totally different experience than than the air on which is a smooth precisely controlled you can get the tilt just right this it's just you know that's on it's easy to do and then when you get off and you do it a few tilts it's a bit stiffer but it's it's just a creaky i don't know nondescript way of doing it it's just just not comfy at all it's not until you get a, a better quality chair that you realize how bad these things are so i'll just show you the bit i renewed so yeah this is it underneath and again the, the chair itself you know has held up well all these staples have stayed in over a space of four or five years but this whole assembly here and like i say as, as you say this is this is your tension adjustment very crude sort of spring inside there but i had to renew all this ram here and all this whole section including this knob this these straps they seem quite good quality these actually straps but still don't make it comfy the wheels on this are just solid there's no soft texture on there they may have been from new i don't know i don't think so and the wheels on this actually they're the same size as the herman miller six centimeters thought they were smaller but they're not they are the same size not the same sort of quality and yeah this bit here this raised bit which goes uh, well i'll let you make your own mind up where that goes <laughs> let's go each side of this it's not i don't know i don't know why they put that there whether they're supposed to be for comfort but it's not very comfortable but yep that's the, the vertigear so here is the air on in the shed on the newly laid laminate floor check out one of my other videos check the card above for how to lay that laminate flooring underneath and hopefully this will be a, a relationship of many happy years so there you have it uh, i think i've done as many features as i, as I can think covering uh, everything on the two models the gaming chair and the office chair now if you have got a vertigear chair or any other gaming chair and you're happy with it well that's great um this is just a review from my personal point of view and my experience with the vertigear chair and this now i know 
I'm going to get comments that, yeah, the Vertigear was four years old and this is only one week old. And I'm going to get comments saying I've had a Vertigear for ages and it hasn't gone wrong. And I understand all that, but I have shown that the bottom base piece, the metal bit on the Vertigear did start cracking only after about two years. It's ages and ages ago since I had my welder out of the garage doing any welding. So it must be at least two or three years ago before I did the first welding bit on it. And then it finally gave up altogether and I had to buy that new base piece and the hydraulic lift. Um, that's just two parts that went wrong within four years. Now, I'm not saying the Aeron is ever going to break down as well, but just looking at the sheer quality of it, I'm pretty confident it won't. It won't have any of them issues anyway. And I've got the 12 year warranty on it. Um, if you look at reviews on Herman Miller stuff online, you'll be hard pushed to find a bad review about them. I've not seen one ever saying, oh, this broke and that broke after a couple of years. And like I say, you're covered for 12 anyway, if it does. But I've had quite a lot of uh, gizmos and gadgets over my lifetime and uh, I can tell quality when I see it. And this is definitely great quality. So, yeah. £900, £1,050 if I was to buy it today. As I said before, a heck of a lot of money. But the more and more I think about it, the more and more I realise that it's money well spent. If, it, if it's the last year I ever buy it, it's money well spent. Now, the I think I mentioned before, the latest Aeron called the Remastered came out in 2017. So that's four years since that came out. Before that, the original was released in 96, and they are now called Classics. And there are plenty and plenty of Classics refurbished um, and used on sale, looking in as good as new condition. I saw a review recently of uh, somebody who bought a refurbished Classic for about £500, I think it was, and uh, he took the cover off the box of tricks underneath with all the mechanism in, and he found a, a, 20, a 2001 sticker on it. So that chair is 20 years old and it's still good enough to be sort of refurbished up and, and sold on and fetch 500 quid. So, uh, yeah, I feel a lot better in my decision about buying one now. And hopefully uh, it's made your mind up or uh, pushed it one way or the other. Don't rule out all gaming chairs, um, read up on reviews on them, but that's just my personal experience of these two chairs. So, thanks again for watching. If you do want to subscribe, please click the little icon here of the shed, and I've got lots more reviews in the pipeline. Next one will be coming up very, very soon, so I'll see you for that then. Thanks again. Bye for now.